I was walking down Clay Street and I saw this beautiful place. YWCA, women, okay, I'm a woman, so I walked in. Chinatown YWCA, it's a power by gathering all people together. They learn from each other. Because of the Y, all those wonderful memories, it's just helped me build the foundation I need to just be a better person, to be the person I am now. It was a piece of property that was a saloon that they could buy cheaply and change over into the YWCA. 1916 was when the Y was first established. It's the oldest and the first organization to serve the needs of Chinese women in San Francisco. Immigrant women can go to get help with translation. If they had domestic problems, they can seek help there. They could learn English there, and the staff did home visits and, and encouraged immigrant women at this time, who were pretty much homebound, to venture out and come to a place where they can meet and interact with other immigrant women. I didn't know what the world outside of Chinatown was like. Chinese women were not supposed to venture out, out into the public alone. But vendors wanted to sell to the Chinese women who didn't go out to buy groceries. And so Chicken Man would sling a great big wicker basket with a rope over his shoulder and come and sell chickens uh, to the women workers. And you wouldn't believe it. A chicken was only 25 cents in those days. Well, I grew up in Chinatown, like everybody else in my generation. We just lived around the corner from the YWCA building. I guess it was just natural that I would get involved. We didn't dare venture up to Powell Street or beyond Kearney, so it was really very segregated. So we are in a community in the South. There were 13 of us on that one flat. There's one toilet, one bathroom for 13 of us, and we manage pretty well. Most of the area uh, the, uh, consisted of a residential hotel, just single rooms, then one water closet per floor on one end, but no bathing facilities. So it tells you at that time then uh, people have to go to bathhouses, and the YW provide that function for women. I don't think it was even a quarter, a dime. And they get a towel. They used the towels too. They, they didn't have to bring the towel. We would pass towels to them. The Y was very much alive and active and with many participants. So they began to realize they needed bigger quarters and they needed more services. There was a very active group of women in um, the late 1920s, and Emily Fong was a very good example of that, who decided that we're going to build this, this building. My mother and Mrs. Tang, Mrs. Florence Tang, and Mrs. Dan Yu Wu, the three of them decided to go up and down the coast, Oregon and Washington, and down to the, the Los Angeles to raise money in the Chinese community for the building and they drove cars. They didn't get on a buses or anything, they just drove cars and they teamed up and they went up and down the coast and they asked for money. They raised $25,000 at the peak of the Great Depression. This is a very, very uh, important architectural gem, especially right in the heart of Chinatown. Done by Julia Morgan. It is devoid of the stereotypical buildings that you see around Chinatown. She took it a little bit more seriously. I started the YW when I was probably seven, eight years old. 
when they first started, they had activities for us. Basketball, swimming, parties with the YMCA. They could come to the Y and use the typewriters, their library, their kitchen facilities, learn how to bake and cook American style. So it was a place that was very much used by um, the, uh, both the, the American-born generation and the immigrant women. That's why the membership grew so quickly, because it was the only place that could provide all these things. One of the reasons why the Y was so successful during its first half of its history before World War II was because of segregation. Chinese could not um, join organizations or live outside of their ethnic community, especially in San Francisco. They were pretty much cloistered in Chinatown. During the war years, the YWCA had a very strong program uh, for the um, uh, young men in service. So a lot of Chinese soldiers and sailors came here for dances, and uh, uh, I tried to, you know, introduce some of the young girls to take part to help entertain them. Every Thursday, there's USO, and the board members and some of their friends will be cooking all afternoon for that night. And this is the only USO for Chinese in San Francisco. And then you could see that once World War II was over and Chinese were able to begin integrating into the large society, the need of this organization was no longer as great and membership began to decline. The community was changing because of the immigration laws of 65, and you had a larger population and a different kind of population of immigrants selling in Chinatown. It was in 69 April that I came to the United States. I was already 21 before I left Hong Kong. I was working and I was also in a church group, singing on Sundays, already in group activity mode. The first couple of months was really hard for me because I, I missed my friends terribly. It was a place where I got back in touch with Chinese-speaking young adults. And it was also a place for me to discover volunteerism, where I could also do something for the community. When I was hired here, we were going through community change. During the 70s is when we started having appreciation of the culture, learning that there was like the Chinese experience, the Chinese American experience. We also started to realize that there were some social issues that were impacting the community. There were so many different issues. We set up coalitions. So it wasn't just the YW. We had a great staff and we work as a team, as a family. Teresa Wu was the director in the 1980s. She really put all her heart and energy into building up the Y. I was here for 12 years. I know every parent expected their kids as soon as them can catch up English uh, because without English, the future is very limited. We emphasize an after-school program. And then summertime, we run summer day camp. I worked one summer and it went really well for me and that's when I decided that teaching it's what's for me. So I went and changed my major completely from college. Girl, what hours begin with? YWCA was the seed to my teaching career. Summer Day Camp was the idea to help the immigrants' parents. So we take kids in very early for child care portion. Then we have an English school half day. In the afternoon, they stay for the Chinese cultural portion. 
At the end of the school program, the summer program, they always have this huge performance. The dinners, the, dinners, the appreciation dinners. Yeah, yeah, and then that's right, the appreciation dinners. And then they actually held a dance because the young kids were like, we want to dance, you know? So after the appreciation dinner, we actually had a dance. That was like one of my first dances I've ever went to. It was at the Y. <laughs> it was in their gym. <laughs> But yeah, that was like the most I've ever been a part of the Chinatown community. Remember when they were trying to come up with poems? <laughs> <laughs> we sat on the t we sat at, at, a, at a house actually. It was at a house. It was were, Erica, Yvonne, and my sister Susan. They were competing. Like they were like, okay, let's see who could Chinese come up. poetry. Who could be uh, who could be more um, poetic? Yeah, poetic. So Erica started off with. Fong Hing Hing Big Pew, and then Yvonne went, You Tick 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 Long. <laughs> it was the funniest thing, and then that's just how it was. Because of the why, all those wonderful memories, it just helped me build the foundation I need to just be a better person, to be the person I am now, definitely. Yeah. The why helped me grow outward so that I'm not so shy and I'm able to meet people without feeling inferior because I'm Chinese. I think that's one of the main things I learned from being part of the YW for so many years. The YWCA uh, shut down its, its operation in Chinatown in 1995. The Center Y and the National Y and its financial problems led to the downfall and the closure. What was going to happen to this building became a major concern of the community. The Y finally sold the building to the Chinese Historical Society. Wonderful transition, excellent transition. Since this was a YWCA devoted to the Chinese community, the Chinese Historical Society has a great opportunity to continue the history of the Chinese here in America. I'm so happy the Historical Society remained partially the YWCA history of uh, uh, Chinatown. The new people come in, they will know there is a piece of a history about Chinese women working, fighting for their opportunities or their growing space. This is the place. <laughs>